Silk, the story of India's magic fabric. It's a fine sunny day. This is a Silkmark authorized retail outlet. Silkmark was introduced by the Ministry of Textiles, Government of India, aiming at the twin objectives of consumer protection and generic promotion of silk in India. A family is shopping for silk, the one material that is and has been loved from generation to generation by us for all our magical moments. From religious festivals to joyous events, no Indian celebration is complete without this beautiful fabric and being natural, silk is comfortable and healthy to wear. Grandma, where does this come from? I don't know, sweetie. Um, I think it's from an insect? No, it's from a Chinese plant. It's from a silkworm, baby. But few know the magnificent story of silk. Come with us on a wonderful journey. Come, discover the world of pure silk. Believe it or not, it all starts with a few acres of fertile soil. This is the beginning of sericulture or raising of silkworms to produce silk. Meet Shivakumar, who first switched from traditional crops to sericulture six years ago. He now grows mulberry plants and rears silkworms. Income from ordinary farming was not sufficient. An officer from Central Silk Board advised me to take up this work. After six years, my family and I have been blessed. The mulberry gardens are carefully maintained, ensuring that only the healthiest cuttings are planted, that they receive enough water and fertilizer, and are protected from pests. But what does the mulberry plant have to do with silk? Quite simply, around 90% of the silk produced in India is mulberry silk, produced by silkworms that feed exclusively on mulberry leaves. Let's get to the heart of the matter, the production of a truly magical fabric. There are four types of silk, mulberry, eri, tassar, and Muga, and India is the only country that produces all of them. Eri, Tassar and Muga are wild silks, produced in very limited quantities. These are also pure silks and rarer than mulberry silks. Only the mulberry silkworm produces enough silk to somewhat meet the huge Indian and international demand. There are four stages in the life of the silkworm. Egg, larva, pupa, and adult silk moth. We'll begin at the adult stage. Here at a government seed center, the practice of sericulture begins with amazing attention to detail. The adult mulberry silk moths are crossbred to ensure health, more quantity of silk, and disease resistance. After mating, the female lays approximately 500 eggs. The laying of one female moth is called a seed. In the eggs, new life is waiting to begin. When the eggs are at the blue stage, they are ready to hatch. Silkworms weighing just a gram or two begin to emerge and immediately begin to eat the fresh mulberry leaves. Over the next 25 days, they will put on 10,000 times their weight. At the government seed center, the little silkworms are fed and tended until after their second molting or shedding of the skin. The silkworms are then distributed to the surrounding farmers to be reared till the fourth molt. After this, they will begin the next stage of their lives, silk spinning. One day, the silkworms refuse to eat anymore. They just move their heads in the shape of an eight. They are now ready to spin silk. Special spinning racks called chandrike are used to encourage the silkworms to spin their cocoons properly. 
Using the stores of food it has eaten, the silkworm produces silk filaments from two glands to form a continuous thread which encases the silkworm in a shell called a cocoon. This cocoon is the basis of silk. For 10 days, the worm goes through its pupa stage in the cocoon to become a moth. Before the moths emerge, the cocoons must be taken to market. But we will return to this soon. We give some of the best seeds to special rarers who take special care of them till they spin their cocoons. They return the cocoons to us and this is from where we get the next generations of eggs or seeds. And so it begins again, the magical life cycle that blesses us with a magical fabric. But our story is not yet over. This is a government cocoon market where Shivkumar will bring his cocoons. This is one of the largest cocoon markets in the world. A sample of Shivkumar's cocoons is sorted to find out the percentage of good ones. They are weighed with the pupa inside and again without the pupa to find out how much of silk is contained. The approximate length is checked. The main object of this cocoon testing center. All these tests are done for the benefit of the rarers and reelers so that the quality of the batch is clear and a fair price agreeable to both parties can be fixed. Everyone benefits. I spent 15,000 rupees on this batch and I have earned over 1 lakh rupees. I am very happy. In 6 years, I have built a house and my children are attending good schools. And so, this son of the soil helps bring silk to our silk-loving country while making a good living out of it. We have taken a journey from soil to cocoon. But what follows is even more interesting. How does the humble cocoon become the wonderful fabric that we wear on all our festive occasions? This is an automatic silk reeling unit that was set up with assistance from the central silk board. This is one of the places where cocoons are made into raw silk that can be reeled and silk thread that can be woven into fabric. First, the cocoons are dried to remove excess moisture. They are then boiled to get rid of the exterior fluff or floss and loosen the silk filament. Next, the cocoons are placed in a reeling machine where the filaments from a number of cocoons are reeled into a single continuous strand. Depending on the quality of the cocoons used, this strand may measure from 600 to 1,200 meters that's over one kilometer of silk from a single cocoon. Also, based on the number of cocoons used for one reel, the strength and weight of the silk fabric is determined. Doubling is the process whereby two silk strands are joined together to make it ready for twisting. The strands are then twisted to give more strength Depending on the number of strands used in the twisting, the fabric made from them is called as one ply, two ply and so on. Now comes an even more exciting step in our journey from soil to silk. 